Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Buongiorno. Buenos dias. Guten Tag. Good morning. And did I miss any? Howdy, y'all. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we got that one in there. Very good. My name is Philip. I'm going to be uh, helping to moderate this room today. If you're not sure where you are, uh, this is the 5G Summit of Qualcomm. If you just wandered up uh, as a hotel guest, hopefully you enjoyed a delicious breakfast. Sit down because we've got a lot of great information for you today. Uh, did anyone check out the keynote yesterday from Cristiano? Yes. Round of applause for a great keynote speech. Cristiano's not here. I'm just trying to get your blood flowing a little bit because uh, I know it's early. And how many of you enjoyed the, uh, the fair last night, the carnival fair outside? All right, very nice. Okay, for those of you who didn't, it wasn't that good. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was a fun time. If you want to check out the keynote, it is available on the landing page for the 5G Summit at Qualcomm.com, as well as on YouTube On Demand. So we have a lot of sessions today. Again, this is the technical track in this room. Next door is the business track. Hopefully, you'll see those uh, represented on your handout for today's itinerary. This room is going to be on the very back. It's also on a giant screen right outside. We're going to start off today uh, learning about the uh, technology evolution of 5G. Coming up right after this, we have a panel with Joseph Soriaga. We're going to be talking about the role of AI in 5G. But without further ado, we're going to get started with driving the technology evolution for 5G advanced. I'd like a nice warm welcome, uh, morning applause for the Senior Vice President of Engineering, John Smee. All right, well, thank you very much for that amazing uh, welcome. And then obviously, uh, it was really fun to see Cristiano's keynote yesterday. And you really saw where 5G is today and how it's expanding, given the role of the connected intelligent edge. So it's my pleasure to talk to you about how are we taking 5G forward with 5G advanced, in some sense, beginning that next era, the second half of 5G, taking us all the way through the end of 2020s into the 2030 timeframe. So if we look at 5G, what's always interesting is to understand then what does it mean in terms of the whole role of the network, the whole role of the cloud, the whole role of the device. So what I'm going to be talking then about is the role of the connected intelligent edge and how does that tie to the evolution of 5G. So at Qualcomm, we've been leading 5G for many years. And the point is, where does it go next? And then one of the interesting things about a technology like 5G is it's about the intersection of things like communications and compute, the fact that really it's about that merged. So what is the role then of these connected devices that have artificial intelligence, that have machine learning, and that are having so many more powerful sensors built into them? So it's that value of connectivity moving into new applications. And so this perspective then with 5G is how does it all fit together? So we talk then about the role of the edge, the role of the cloud. So we all understand that there's a lot of data being processed in the cloud. The interesting thing though is how far away is the cloud? So you can measure that in kilometers or miles. Well, Qualcomm, we measure that in milliseconds. Because the reality is we're moving toward a more instantaneous world. The value that's being created at the edge of the network, it requires low latency communication. It also requires new ways of doing compute. It requires new value that's being created at the edge of the network, on device. So whether it's a smart hospital, a smart factory, a smart school, the fact is that that role of 5G at the edge of the network combined with AI is how we achieve scale. And so 5G itself is obviously a wireless technology, and it's also standardized, and we're going to be talking about that today. But the interesting thing is that scaling of processing and scaling of connectivity are intertwined. So we can then look at this fact of what does it mean if we're bringing these capabilities? Where do we need to take the core 5G technology itself? So the innovation that we're driving at Qualcomm on 5G is really forcing us to take a broad step backwards and understand the specifics of what we need to do to bring together that role of processing, of compute, of communication, of sensing, and of intelligence. So in particular, we look at the fact that 5G itself is built in layers. It's built on that foundational innovation of Release 15. That, that led itself after the Release 14 study item. So we had releases 15, 16, and 17 really enabling this broader view of 5G itself, a much more compelling air interface than 4G. But we are right now at a point of inflection. We're about to move from 5G into 5G advanced. 
So 5G Advanced is released as 18, 19, and 20. And so that's what I'm going to be focusing on today is what's coming next in 5G. And this is really setting the path towards 6G because we know we're going to need a new overall platform in 2030, even more capable, making sure that we can take communications, connectivity, and compute from 2030 into 2040. But before then, we have to make sure we're getting the maximal value out of all those 5G investments you've already heard. We know there's over 200 operators who've deployed 5G. So what does that mean for them as they're continuing to make investments? Or if we look at ways that we're evolving millimeter wave, how does that move forward to get value into those ecosystems? So it's my honor to be speaking at the same time as the business track where we're talking about that 5G millimeter wave ecosystem expansion right now. And in particular then, the technologies of releases 15, 16, 17 pave the way for how releases 18 and beyond can expand and bring new connectivity into 5G. So as we know, Qualcomm is built on innovation. So the way we look at communication, the way we look at signal processing, the way we look at even things like channel coding and the way we use antennas. So all of these aspects that define an air interface, well, Qualcomm led that in releases 15, 16, and 17. And so when we look at the innovation, it's really about understanding how did that core technologies itself, we design them to be forward compatible. So we, at the very start of 5G, knew we needed to take this forward for a full decade. So that meant we needed new approaches for how we designed the air interface to be more flexible, more compatible for new use cases. Whether it's high reliability and low latency processing at the same time, or scaling for IoT. And so this evolution from releases 15, 16 into 17 expanded the set of techniques and the set of tools we can bring together. So as we're at this precipice about to evolve into 5G advanced, there's many new technologies we can bring together to make sure we're driving it forward. But we also need to do this in a careful way. We have to balance some of the interests. We have to make sure that we're bringing value to mobile broadband, even as we're scaling into IoT and new types of services. We also have to make sure that we're understanding 5G advanced is an opportunity for foundational innovation. The technology vectors that we're driving into 6G, we're also seeing how can we bring that into 5G advanced itself. So because of that, we're balancing these intermediate term needs, long term needs, and the short term needs, making sure that what's coming out of the standard can make a real world difference in terms of that 5G deployment. And at the same time, as we look at the connected intelligent edge, and we realize how important those devices are going to be, then we need to know that that evolution of the air interface on the device side and the network side and how they work together is more important now than ever. So in particular, if we look at, well, what is in Release 18? Then it's this perspective of the end-to-end -end system design. So what are the technologies we're doing to drive things like MIMO forward on the downlink, on the uplink, on the device side with a full suite of solutions? And at the same time, how are we furthering things like mobility, power consumption, evolving the network topology? Even in Cristiano's keynote yesterday, he mentioned integrated access and backhaul. We also saw in our economic discussions yesterday the incredible important role of fixed wireless access. So 5G technologies are moving into new frames of network topology, whether it's how we use repeaters or how we use integrated access and backhaul. Those changes, they change how we can deploy 5G even more cost effectively. How can we make sure millimeter wave is reaching more applications? And at the same time, when we look at 5G and servicing new applications, we need an end-to-end -end perspective. How do we make sure that technologies like augmented and virtual reality get their best performance on 5G? So that requires an end-to-end -end systems view. So we want to look at boundless extended reality. What are the changes we need to make in the standard? How do we further evolve released 17 IoT forward into release 18 and beyond? So that reduced capability opens up new markets. And even technologies like Sidelink, where devices communicate with each other not only for vehicles, but other applications. So when you put this all together, Release 18 is that beginning of that 5G advanced, and it sets off this new era. And as we're going to know from the talk coming up right after this, the panel discussion on 5G and AI, this is no better example than the importance of the connected intelligent edge. So the work that Qualcomm is doing to put AI on device and AI into our network plans, all of that also requires us to look at how does AI itself move into the air interface. 
So on release 18, that begins. On the radio access network side, study items for how are we gonna bring AI into that 5G ecosystem to have even more efficiencies. This is also a fundamental technology moving into 6G. 6G will be cloud native, it will also be AI native. That begins with 5G advanced. So Qualcomm is leading that charge, a huge amount, a huge amount of R&D from Qualcomm over many years, answering the specific question of how do we innovate the air interface for artificial intelligence? What are even the frameworks, not only on the neural network side, but the model exchange side, cross-node machine learning between the device and the network? How do they partner with the air interface to bring value, to bring new efficiencies, to further that expansion of 5G into the connected intelligent edge. And if we look at the role of augmented virtual reality, you might know about Qualcomm's $100 million Snapdragon Metaverse Fund. So that's our commitment to looking at that intersection of connectivity and new applications. So the evolution of the smartphone, and even having the smartphone communicate with an AR VR headset, that is just the beginning. In release 18, we're also looking at new techniques to improve the capacity of XR over 5G. So this is an example of Qualcomm's deep technology expertise, our pragmatic understanding of where we need to go next. What do we need to standardize? What do we need to implement in our products? Where do we need to expand the ecosystem itself to bring that value? So you can imagine whether it's a doctor or a nurse or a physician's assistant, all working 10 years from now or five years from now in a connected world where the value of that instantaneous communication is leveraging 5G, AI, and XR. So at Qualcomm, we're leading this expansion of 5G into how we better support augmented virtual reality, building on the fact that we already today have a huge evolving set of platforms to enable this ecosystem. At the same time, IoT itself, we can look at it in many different lenses. Some of you might remember the early days of 5G was defined based on a triangle. Mobile broadband, massive IoT, critical IoT. Well, that critical IoT, the high reliability, low latency communication, well, that began in release 16 with the role of even evolving into things like time-sensitive networking. But at the same time, as we look to release 17 and 18, we're also bringing forward the expansion into wide area IoT. Release 17 delivered reduced capability IoT, red cap, what we call NR Lite. And at the same time, we can further scale down as we move forward into releases 18 and beyond. So there's a huge amount of work to make sure we get the power consumption right, the mobility right, the scenarios, the days of use, making sure that 5G, those investments that are being made into these networks today and tomorrow, that they're serving so many more devices. So the value of that 5G expansion into IoT is core to the connected intelligent edge because there's gonna be so many more devices, whether it's a smart camera, whether it's a wearable, whether it's a medical device. Think of the amount of information that can get exchanged. Well, that is leveraging the fact that 5G is moving, not only through mobile broadband, tens of gigabits per second, not only into factories with critical industrial IoT applications, but then also taking 5G forward into wide area IoT, low powered devices that are also long range. So whether that's for agriculture, whether it's for smart cities, whether it's better connecting so many different industries. Another fundamental underpinning technology is the fact that 5G is moving beyond communications. Absolutely, we're gonna to continue to evolve 5G for the core technologies of data rate, mobility, latency, reliability. At the same time, technologies like positioning and location are foundational for the value creation in 5G. So whether it's an AGV in a factory floor, whether it's an autonomous vehicle, whether it's a piece of farming equipment, the desire to know location accurately, leveraging the fact that 5G is wider bandwidth. It's also higher band. It's more directional. We have new techniques based on machine learning and end-to-end -end processing improvements. We can much better enable positioning in 5G itself. So we're through releases 16, 17, and 18, Qualcomm's continuing to lead that charge. And it's because as we look at the connected intelligent edge, positioning, location, how we look at new service models, that's all leveraging the fact that these waveforms can be co-designed not only for communication, but also for positioning. 
And so when then we look at this expansion of 5G, it's really an honor to be presenting this slide. I presented it during release 15 and release 16. And the fact that we're moving into 17 and 18, there's so many more applications and devices enabled by 5G. So many more features enabled by this rich ecosystem. So there's a reason we talk about the expanded addressable market for Qualcomm. It's because of the fact that 5G is touching so many industries, so many applications, so much value creation at the edge of the network. And it's because of this expansion, even in 3GBP itself, to efficiently serve these new applications. So we're working on every one of these boxes on this slide because we understand how it fits together. What are the things we need to move forward? What are the things we need to combine? How do we bring that value from a standard all the way through that innovation cycle, the investment cycle, the trials, and driving that forward through commercialization? So that 5G advanced evolution is core to realizing that full vision of 5G. And so when we look longer term, the question is, where does this all go? Well, one of the important parts then, we talk of the integrated merging, the physical world having more and more devices. So even today, devices are being connected. What's the value of a device that's digital that's not connected? The reality, those devices are going to be connected, and no one's going to be plugging them into Ethernet. So the fact that there's more physical devices getting connected. And at the same time, those devices are exchanging data. It's not just about watching flat screens. It's the fact that that data that's being generated within the devices themselves is being exchanged. And it's being exchanged at the edge of the network. Absolutely, these devices are cloud connected, but they're also connected to each other. So that value of that merging of that digital world, the digital twin of the physical world, how can we better optimize systems? Whether it's a factory, a hospital, a school, or even how we look at networks across private networks and public networks, that digitization and that exchange of data is core to this long-term vision. And at the same time, the physical world is being virtualized. So this augmented and virtual reality, we're in the early stages. And at the same time, there's so much activity already. So for Qualcomm, this is an incredibly important intersection. And it's how we look at the world into 2030. So here we are today at the 5G Summit in 2022. Well, I'm confident that we're going to be presenting a slide like this each and every year. Because this vision of how the physical world is connected wirelessly with the digitization and the changing form factors, whether you're making people more productive at their work, whether you're better connecting people with their friends and family, or whether you're bringing new applications and industries to address digital divide, improve connectivity. So this ability to leverage wireless evolution into this merging of the physical digital world is about making people more connected and then also improving their productivity, their access to education. So it's so important that we use these three vectors here to understand how does it all fit together. So then when we look at that 6G timeframe, it's about recognizing that, hey, we've all been using cell phones for many years, and we've been using smartphones for many years as well now. So that expansion from 4G, from 3G into 4G and 4G into 5G, was about expanding cellular into new applications and new industries. So things like high reliability, low latency communication, or IoT, or connecting vehicles. And even as we saw yesterday in Nicole's talk and panel discussion, the question of what is the value of a vehicle that's not connected? So the role of connectivity into smart transportation and smart city is also being a key topic of that 5G advanced evolution. But when we look longer term into 6G, it's really about how does the network itself evolve? How do the devices evolve? So how can we better deliver a network performance addressing this merging of the physical, digital, virtual world? So this topology is changing. So the important work we're doing right now to leverage the expansion of cellular networks, we're taking this forward into new compute paradigms. How do we distribute compute in the 2030 era? Well, how are we designing then 6G for this future of cloud computing, where the role of the edge cloud is moving to even more instantaneous applications. So the fact that these devices are a source of data, these devices have artificial intelligence and machine learning built in. So it will be cloud native, 
and it will also be designed for this end-to-end -end connectivity, bringing new value. So for Qualcomm, as we look at this evolution from 4G to 5G to 6G, it's about designing a network and sets of devices for these diverse use cases and recognizing that fundamentally, technologies like 5G evolution and 6G are about really connected compute and distributed compute and how we move compute around to address a much wider number of scenarios. So then we take a look back and say, well, what are some of the key 6G design vectors? It's this fact that we're combining both revolutionary techniques and evolutionary techniques. So we're absolutely trying to fuel these next generation use cases, the future of augmented virtual reality, but at the same time, making sure we're bringing those core advancements. So whether it's in silicon processing, whether it's integrated design from antenna through RF all the way to baseband to deliver efficient power consumption, serving new use cases. So how are we looking at the role of AI and ML in a 6G network design and at the same time in 5G advanced? So the interesting thing is all of this technology we're looking at for 5G advanced, we're also looking at, well, how do we put it together in a new air interface targeting 2030 with 6G? And so our technology evolution, our technology investments at Qualcomm, driving into this connected intelligent edge is feeding both 5G advanced and longer term 6G. And it's because our technology vision and our understanding of how it needs to fit together, we're gonna to assemble things a little bit differently in 5G advanced than we will in 6G. But at the same time, we're always looking to intersect the technology evolutions that are occurring in adjacent industries. So the evolving roles of public networks and private networks, how do those fit together with new applications into that 6G era? And so our designs are looking end to end and they're trying to understand the best way of putting things together. And one of the easiest ways to talk about this is to understand the vectors we are pushing forward. So these foundational vectors of 6G innovation and 5G advanced evolution, things like machine learning, spectrum expansion. With 5G, it was so successful to expand not only for sub six and sub seven gigahertz, but into millimeter wave. And in taking this forward longer term into 6G with even new bands. So the reality is these ability to leverage spectrum is core to wireless. So it's the reason Qualcomm looks at the end to end system from antenna to baseband, from network to device, from cloud computing to edge cloud. So what are these scalable network architectures? The disaggregation and virtualization is only gonna continue more. How do we bring general purpose compute into evolved network designs? How do we ensure that the technologies we're bringing into 5G advanced for augmented virtual reality are also being incorporated into new native 6G designs? So these core technology evolution, whether it's on security, whether it's on reliability, whether it's how we look end-to-end -end at applications, that is core to how we're advancing 5G evolution and 6G itself. And if we look at Qualcomm, it's one of those things where as you could even see from the demonstrations being shown here in a parallel room, the fact that we like to build it. We need to test it. We wanna understand the technologies. So we're obviously designing these, simulating these, bringing them to standards. We are also building them. We wanna understand the fundamental trade-offs. What is driving the design? As we look end to end, how do we have efficient power consumption, efficient performance, getting that coverage KPIs, integrating compute? So our foundational air interface innovations, we're looking at MIMO, we're looking at new techniques of pushing that forward even more. And at the same time, our expansion into new applications. This is also something where our foundational research is enabling these technology demonstrations. So if we look at that work at Qualcomm, the stuff we're doing where we're investing 10 years ahead of the cycle, it's about understanding the foundational research, how we bring that into trials, how we bring it into the standardization, the innovation, and all the way through to the commercialization. So it really is an honor for many members of the research team to be participating in that broad cycle of innovation. So we can look at the Qualcomm Metaverse Fund, the $100 million Snapdragon Fund, and we can understand that we were looking at augmented virtual reality many, many years ago. And we were designing 5G to ensure it supported high reliability, low latency, efficient end-to-end -end communication, and the hooks necessary to have the APIs and the SDKs for end-to-end -end performance optimization. 
So we're actually demonstrating those technologies right now because they're gonna underpin that 5G advanced evolution. And we're putting them together to understand what are the fundamental trade-offs? What do we need to standardize? What do we need to implement? And how do we put them together? So all of these demonstrations are available publicly, and many of our different research team members are then discussing the technology evolutions in each one of these buckets. And it's because of that foundational innovation, it's that investment that enables us to understand where is the connected intelligent edge going? What is evolving in the air interface itself? As we're embarking on 5G advanced, releases 18, 19, and 20, how is that building on releases 15, 16, and 17, that core foundational aspect of 5G itself? And then how is this expanding into new applications and new use cases? And so in particular, we are now at this point of beginning the journey into 5G advanced, beginning that global standardization, that NRE investment, whether it's long-term academic research or the industrial partnerships that are gonna be necessary to realize this future value. So at Qualcomm, we are honored to be participating in every one of these ecosystems, understanding where is 5G today? Where can we better improve that operator performance, that device user experience? Whether it's bringing AI into SDX70 for actual on-device artificial intelligence today, or how we're bringing that into the air interface in release 18 and beyond. And that's what's enabling us to drive 5G advanced further into the connected intelligent edge. So for the remainder of this decade, we are gonna be maximizing the value of all of these 5G investments and making concerted careful decision on where do we need to take 5G next to realize that full value. And at the same time, already beginning the foundational research into 6G technology to make sure that the value being created for 2030 to 2040 is expanding even beyond what we're doing today in the 2020s. And so thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be talking to you today on 5G Advanced.